Subsoiling. Does it pay? Was it worth it? Did we accomplish what we want? That's what this video is going to share. In fact, it's going to share four years of what we've seen on our farm at Petura Seeds in Domain, Manitoba. And over the years, we've seen different outcomes. And I'm going to dive into a little bit and explain why we saw those different outcomes. Let's face it, we know subsoiling works. People have done it for years. It's not a new practice. But what I want to do uh, with this video, with these results, is help you understand how subsoiling can help and when subsoiling helps. Because it's not every time, every year. Uh, it's important to understand our weather conditions, our growing season, and our crops to truly understand how it made a difference on our farm, but most importantly, how it'll make a difference on your farm. So. Let's dive into it, a recap of four years on subsoil. So quickly, this is what our tool looks like, 30 inch rows. We subsoiled anywhere from 12, I should say 10 to 16 inches deep, depending on the year and the field. This is on an average year, depending on the soil moisture, when we subsoiled, what the finishing result looked like a trench or a furrow uh, with very little disturbance on the top. Here's an example of how we evaluated subsoiling. So you can see here on this 145 acre piece, we left a strip down the middle at the angle we subsoiled. We then proceeded to seed across, of, across it in any direction. We planted a weather station and a soil moisture probe both within where we did not subsoil and where we did subsoil. Now, this is an NDVI image sharing vegetation difference in one of our fields in soybeans, where we did see a seven bushel yield increase, but it clearly defines the application of where we did subsoil versus where we did not. And here's an example of one of the ways where we took our yield data from, we would take a combine pass on each side of where we did and didn't subsoil, measure that with the way wagon. We had also utilized our results in my John Deere operation system, replicating it multiple different times, multiple different passes, removing field anomalies that could potentially skew results. The goal, taking that average yield of all those ways to get the most accurate result to represent the actual outcome of subsoiling versus unsubsoiling. So, here are the results. Three years, the first three years of results, a little bit of a recap. Um, we subsoiled all of these fields only once, and that's important to remember. We only went over them once, which, depending on the year, the price of fuel, and how hard it was pulling, came down to a cost analysis of $25 to $40 an acre cost per acre subsoiling. All costs, all in. And what we saw is we continued to measure the yield results out of those exact same trials three and four years later. So you can see here on field 13 and 14, leading up to the crop year of 23, we saw positive yield response two out of three times. So the question is, did it show up on the fourth time? And how long are we going to continue to see these benefits in yield? On our second field, we've got three years of results, and we only saw a positive yield result one time. Field three, after the first year, one positive yield result. So going into this year, six and two, three, four, sorry, four out of six times, or two thirds, 66% of the time, we were seeing a yield increase. We didn't add any new field going into 23 in terms of variety or trial evaluations, but we kept monitoring those same fields. So for example, field 13 and 14, we subsoiled in the fall of 2019 and haven't subsoiled it since. And we're still measuring that exact spot where we did and didn't subsoil. And what did we see? A third out of four years on that field, positive yield response. Field 25, 26 in canola, no yield response, which is interesting because in our rotation, canola is the crop that has not had a positive return on investment. So let's think about it. 
canola out of all those crops, wheat, oats, probably has the most aggressive rooting structure and specifically has the deepest tap root out of those crops. And we didn't see the yield increase. And then on field 19, on our second year, a positive response in wheat. So you add that up, six out of nine site years of data had a significant positive yield increase. Again, 66% of the time. Now, here's the important thing. It didn't happen every time every year. And one major factor when you look at these results is what kind of growing season did we have after we subsoiled? What were the subsoiling conditions and which crop? So three things I believe really affected the outcome of if subzoning works or not. Again, which crop you're growing, the conditions that we subsoiled, and the weather conditions following subsoil. Three factors affecting that outcome. If only it was black and white. I know, that's what you're thinking. So, what's important when we started and why we're using our weather stations and our subsoiling is we wanted to get an understanding of what's going on in the atmosphere, but most importantly, what's going on below ground. Are we actually increasing the rooting depth? Are we actually increasing the water efficiency? Are we capturing more water when there's a rainfall event? All those kind of things are things that might have a positive effect on a crop, but we don't know, so we have to measure them. And over years, hopefully, Willie will get a better understanding of, did we increase our water efficiency in those fields? So, here's what's going on above the ground in terms of precipitation and when it falls. I zeroed in on field 13 and 14. So, remember this field? I analyzed years 21, 22, and 23. So, in this scenario, three crops. Two out of three crops had a positive yield response. So on field 19 in 21, uh, we were well below long-term average rainfall amounts. We were looking at, uh, I think, 40% May precipitation. Again, this crop in 21 was oats. June below average, July, below average, August, fairly close to average. In 22 on this field, we had canola and we had a very, very wet spring. The subsoil probe was not into the ground. That's why there's an asterisk there. But we had 10 inches of rain and then we proceeded to grow a crop on very little rain following that and did not see yield difference. And in 23, when we grew Wheat on that field, we saw a slight yield increase. And again, in the crop year 23, very dry spring, decent subsoil moisture starting, very dry spring, and finished well below, well, well below normal. Interesting, the crop year of 23 was even drier than the drought of 21. Okay, now let's dive into water use efficiency by crop in the subsoiled versus unsoiled. So, bear with me. 21, oat crop, untreated check, treated or subsoil. Six bushel gain, total water taken up during the growing season was more in the subsoil, which makes sense. It had more yield, it's going to need more water. Now I'm narrowing in on the different depths. At different depths, what percent of water did it use at the probe? And this one's really important because what we have historically seen is in the four years, each station or each subsoil probe always showed the rooting depth reaching a deeper level 10 days before the untreated. Let me say that again. If on July 1st in our oat crop, the roots were at 50 centimeters in the untreated check. On July 1st in oats, they would have been at 60 or 70 centimeters deep by July 1st. They were always anywhere from seven to 14 days 
deeper than the untreated. So it allows for a longer timeline of water uptake from a deeper level. So when you narrow that down into the sensors at 50 centimeters, 70 centimeters, and 100 centimeters, what did we see? We actually saw a relatively similar percent water use at each depth, but we ended up with more yield. And in this circumstance, the roots were deeper 10 days earlier. When we move into canola, very little yield difference, very little water uptake difference. But what we saw is a higher percent use at a deeper depth. So we might didn't have a positive effect on yield, but we did use more water from deeper down rather than surface. Again, now let's dive into why is that? Remember, the crop year of 2022, we were completely saturated at time of planting. This was a June seeded canola crop, and we were saturated. And so the roots didn't have to go down for moisture, but in the subsoil, they chose to go down because it was easier to go down. There was probably a higher amount of oxygen down there, a little bit looser, so the roots could go deeper earlier. And why that's important, even if we didn't see a yield increase, if we would have dried out more in July and more in August in the crop year of 22, I suspect we would have seen a yield increase at that point. But because of the environmental conditions happening, where we started with saturated subsoil, we didn't see that yield increase. Now in 23, a very dry crop year, water single biggest yield limiting factor in 23, and we did see a yield increase. Keep in mind, this was subsold four years before this crop year of 23, and we still saw a yield increase. So we're still seeing, I'll call it a looser subsoil between 14, 12, and 14 inches, where the roots can get down deeper, quicker, past that, and continue to go deeper. And we also did see, in some scenarios, more on the 100 centimeters, a higher water use uptake in the wheat, in the subsoil versus the unsubsoil. Keep in mind, these stations are in the exact same spot every single year. So what does that mean? Summarize all of that for me. Water use efficiency over the last three years. The final numbers come in at we saw a 4, 9, and 12% increase in water use efficiency, which is what we are trying to evaluate. Keep in mind, depending on the year and the growing conditions, it influenced that. But we are running, after three years, an average increase water use efficiencies at each of those depths on our farm in Red River clay soils. <clears throat> so, Great to hear. I mean, you go and do every farm every year, every field every year. That's what we're going to continue to evaluate and figure out. Right now, now we're starting the process on our farm of should how often should we revisit field subsoil if we continue to see a payback 66% of the time. Here's the totals by field for profit by acre that we feel those fields are up based on commodity price at the time, fuel costs at the time, and we'll continue to evaluate that. But so far, very positive values. The one thing that's really interesting to note, we know this, every field has different compaction layers at different depths. And it's so tough to make sure that you're trying to bust up that compaction layer just below where that compaction layer is and do the right job. <clears throat> Over the years, depending on how much moisture is in that subsoil, we saw a significant difference in how the machine pulled through the ground. The drier it was, the better the fractionation, the harder the pulling, the slower you had to go, the more fuel you had to use. So all these kind of things kind of factor into that profitability as we evaluated fuel use on a per acre basis. The interesting thing I want to highlight here is this asterisk number. This year, we subsoiled four fields, three of which had been subsoiled in the fall of 2019. So we grew four crops, and now some fields we re-subsoiled. And what I want to share with you is the field that we had never subsoiled before. We used two gallons an acre. 
the fields that we subsoiled four years ago, we were able to go 0 0.2, 0 0.3 mile an hour faster, and we used an average of 1.8 gallons an acre, so 10% less fuel and a little bit faster. Clearly, what we did four years ago is having a positive effect still on the soil in terms of looseness. Now, the ultimate goal out of all this, are we having a positive effect on soil tilth, which will have a long-term benefit consistently on our crop when we go through these extreme dry and extreme wet periods? Because ultimately, that's what you and every other farm in the rest of the world is trying to produce the highest amount of yield in ongoing, what seems like increasing extreme weather patterns. Can we make our soil more resilient? That's it. You've got the results. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you gleaned something of it. We've got some past videos of subsoiling from previous years, a little more in depth about what we saw in the field rather than just the final results, which are also important to grab. Grab the link below. We will post it. Please send us a note, a message. I love feedback. I love dialogue. Let's learn together. Until then, keep your stick on the ice and good luck planting your crop for the crop year of 2024.